Welcome. So, today, we are going to explore, or I am going to explore, some Spectrum, Sinclair Spectrum games that I have extracted from my parents' attic from when me and my brother were younger. Um, there's quite a few I found. Not as many as I thought I would. There's several key items that I feel are missing from this collection. I haven't looked over it in an in-depth look, but I, I, there seems to be some core games, shall we say, that are missing. Uh, which Some of which I can't remember what they were called. I can kind of remember the you know when you can remember the imagery of a game, or the basic premise and the graphics, but you can't remember the name and then you try to type into Google things like Spectrum game with face on cover space. That might just be, be me, but I, I can't think of several games. Uh, hopefully they'll come back to me at some point and I'll have some sort of epiphany or revelation. Uh, but I do have such classics as Trapdoor. Who remembers Trapdoor? One of my favourite ZX Spectrum games and one of the more colourful of the Spectrum variety. Those graphics. Look at that. Red, blue, look, there's many colours on there. Somewhere in the dark and nasty regions, where nobody goes, stands an old and spooky castle. Yeah, you, you know the rest. Um, home of the home of the bad tempered thing. Was it called the bad tempered thing? I thought it was just called the thing upstairs. Anyway, if you ever played that, great game. I could never get past the third mission, something like that. It was so damn hard. But then. Games in those days were, and they were better for it. Akari Warriors, the classic vertical scrolling game, which I can't remember playing, but good, looks good, yes, must play. Rainbow Islands, that was, and indeed still is, probably a good game. Look at the graphics on that. That is not a spectrum, is it? This is the um, the notorious slap. The best graphics available from a given console onto the back of the packet and make it the generic packet for every computer system available at the time. This is probably the graphics from uh, an Atari ST. How old is this? I don't know. Might even be the Amstrad CPC, because the Amstrad could dish out some pretty colourful graphics if it tried, which often didn't. The developers didn't, they just used to port Spectrum games and they went bad. Tato coin up hits, remember these? Bubble Bubble, I remember that. Legend of Rage, I don't remember that. Renegade, yes, good. Uh, uh, here you go, this is a good confirmation. R-Type, good game. Operation Wolf, good game, not so good if you used the keyboard though, because it took a good while to move the cursor, or the target, across the screen, and you had to be quite accurate with it as well. Didn't play it with a light gun, don't think. Double Dragon, good. Batman, which Batman is this? This is the... This, there was a few Batmans for the Specky. This is the one with the uh, comic strip, sort of. What used to be like comic strip. You used to walk between scenes and it used to impose new comic. What am I trying to think of? Boxes on the screen for you to walk through. There was also an isometric one, which was good. And the movie title, movie tie in, which was my. Favorite, and there it is. 
If anyone ever played this, you will probably remember the notorious part where you had to crack the Joker's code, uh, which was a bit of a kind of guessing game. It was on the... it was, was it after the first level, second level? Uh, I think the second level, because you used to get... I used to be pleased but I got so far and then get to the Joker's code and then you know, fuck it up and then have to start again. No save games in those days. Turtles. This, I believe, is based on the NES version. I can't remember. I, yeah, I can remember playing this. I think I was quite disappointed because it was nothing like the arcade version. Viz game any British person should know about. And I never played because it was too rude maybe? I don't know. Piracy is theft. Look at the Amstrad version on there. Look, look how colourful that is compared to that. Or even the Commodore. Look at that. The Amstrad version looks immense. Look at that. Mm. Commodore, Spectrum, not much between them. Surprisingly, because Commodore ones, 64 titles normally stood out a mile. Make a chip? Who played that? No one. Uh, Sega Collection by US Gold. There was some good stuff from the, on the US Gold label. Obviously it was all American. Uh, but stuff like Dynamite Ducks was great. Thunderblade. Cracking stuff. Another gem, Elevator Action. A very good arcade port. Colourful doors. Can't beat it. Gauntlet. I was going to say Gauntlet 2, but that is just Gauntlet. Uh, what can you say about that? It was a bit annoying having to multi-load the levels, but still a fucking good game. Uh, well, let's just go through these uh, rapid pace, shall we? Potty Pigeon. What? What? Nope. What the hell is that? Bomb Jack, the um, sequel to the good Bomb Jack, made into a bag of poo. And nothing like the arcade version either. It was made by a different developer, and it was very different, shall we say. Uh, here's one. Not a lot of people remember. Project Future. Uh, great game. Great game. Look at that. Your mission to teleport aboard. Activate the self-destruct system of the dreaded SS Future. The SS Future is a huge labyrinth. Is that how you spell labyrinth? Not convinced. Not convinced. Let's move on. Classic. What other classics do we have? Oh, there we go. One of the dizzy ones. What's that? Treasure Island. Is that the third one? Trans Am. Good game. Uh, Agent X, Cavers of Doom, a lot of these, are, I remember the uh, cassette sleeves more than, more than the games themselves, there was always, was it just me who spent, can't have been, ages just looking at the cassette sleeves and just imagining what a game this could be, and then translating it into the Poor two-tone graphics on the screen with all sorts of glitches and things like that. Look at this. I, just, I remember this, this cover so clearly. It's just some bloke holding dynamite, but it was just the anticipation of playing the game. And yeah, you don't get any more, dear. You? you just get um, everything done for you with graphics. And most of the games you download, you can get. A Label, dear. Sam Cruise, this is a awesome game. As was Scuba Kids. There's Bomb Jack. And uh, Peter Pack Rat, one of my favourite games. Essentially, you are a rat in the dirk, dirky, dirky, dark and murky underworld that rats live in. Look at this. The junkyard is not such a safe place as it's patrolled by Riff Rat, the leader of the rats of Flatbush. His minions 
and various other villains, including Scrapper the Junkyard Dog, Sticky the Spice. It sounds awful, this world. I would not like to be a pack rat, whatever the fuck a pack rat is. Ah, uh, what do we have here? Bargain Basement. Jack the Nipper 2. Luna Jetman. Little Puff. Interesting. Mm. References to drugs should be avoided. Uh, roller coaster. Cat. I thought that was Bruce Lee, but it's not. It's just a game that looks exactly like Bruce Lee does. As I will demonstrate with the Bruce Lee cartridge. You can see the similarities. Maybe not exactly. Oh, they're both by Americana Software. Obviously quite an original brand. Likes to come up with original titles. Ah, Slightly Magic. Biggles. Uh, anyone who played Biggles will, I'm sure, relate to the fact, but it was immensely difficult. Uh, the first level you had to, I think you had to walk to your plane, and I could hardly ever get past the first level. Maybe I'm just shit. I was quite young at the time, I guess. That's no excuse. I'm sure I could not do it now, either. Ah, uh, what else do we have? Center pod? Pod? Strider 2 I've got a lot of games to play here. I remember that game! Although I was never really inspired by games with photographs on the sleeve. It was never quite as... I think it drew you in as much look at art like this. It was like, look at this Strider, he's got... How many swords has he got? Ten swords and a gun and explosions and things. It just worked better, didn't it? Whereas you've got a photo here, you see pictures of people. You see people all the time. Look at that, it's a person. Great. And it's a game. And the game looks nothing like real life, so you can't relate it to the person. Know what I mean? Look at this. You like this? Go on at two. Okay. That does not look genuine, does it? That looks like a nice copy. Even with the synopsis on the back. The arcade sensation, it's a world full of monsters. Kicks. You look inside. Oh, and it's it's the genuine tape. I I don't think this was the genuine sleeve somehow. But the genuine sleeve may have existed somewhere. I don't know, maybe the tape came from a Car boot sale from the 80s. Good game. Yes, maybe it was sold sleeveless, just back on gauntlet. What was that? Did, they, did anyone ever use this software starter pack? Well, I didn't. Scion, really? What was it? A comprehensive keyboard trainer. Right. What does that do? Teach a keyboard how to fetch? And an entertaining and illuminating range of programs. That's a description and a half, isn't it? You're going to buy that. I know it came with the computer, but if you were be looking to buy a new game or a piece of software and just said an entertaining and illuminating range of programs, you'd be like, fuck off. What does that mean? That's it. Oh, look at this. Ghost Hunters. Uh, we're, going, we're, going, we're starting to get to the dregs now, the dregs of the cassettes. What I'll do is I will make some tapes. Tapes? I'll make some videos about some of these tapes and um, get some gameplay going on. So, if you're interested in seeing that, please stay tuned. If you're not, then go away and don't come back.